Hey guys, welcome to Distill the Bourbon Podcast. I'm Brent. I'm here with my co-host Chuck and Brian. And today is part two of our Green River Distillery uh, series. Today we're going to take a tour of the campus. And that's one of the great things about us offering some video. You get a sense of what it's like to tour a distillery. We're going to see everything from where the grain comes in to where it's cooked, where it's fermented. Uh, the, the, the big column still, this enormous 54-inch column still stands four stories tall. Uh, and eventually we'll get out to uh, to the Rick House where we, we smell the, the, the angel share, that sweet smell of, of, a, of bourbon wafting through the Rick House. That's right. And Karen is going to be our tour guide today. She's Karen with a C. Karen with a C, that's Karen right. Uh, unlike most people, she retired in Florida and decided to move to Kentucky. <laughs> so we look forward to the tour with Karen. Yeah, how much fun was Karen? She's a brand ambassador uh, with Green River. Uh, she used to be a tour guide, so she knows the place backwards and forwards. And uh, she was a lot of fun. Now, what you're going to see are highlights. It's not the entire tour. So do yourself a favor. Get to Owensboro. Go on this tour. Uh, all of the tour guides that we met were just fantastic. Really great people there. And uh, have a little taste at the end in the tasting room. You're not going to regret it. Uh, it is a whiskey without regrets. It is whiskey w without regrets. Absolutely. Uh, I regret I regret that I can't speak English today. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy our tour of the Green River Distillery. The history. Do you know the whole background of everything? I'm for the, read up on it, so I'm read up pretty. I've been with on it. your tour, so I hope I know. Yeah, everything. and I've been on your tour. Well, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You just have such a great history to tell. Yeah, it is. So the cities, like San Francisco, for instance, is the salesman resided in that area. And yeah, the product there? yeah, that's where they were. That's where they were based. So that out shows of, how that large sh they, well, they really were. Right, because J. W. McCulloch's whole goal, he was big into advertising, and he knew the success of the brand depended on advertising. So that's what he did. He made it worldwide known, and so you know, it won awards in Paris, over in Belgium, it won the World's Fair and different tastings here, uh, and you know, back in the day, I think you brought it up earlier, it was actually the official whiskey of the United States Marine Hospital. It got rebuilt by a group that went bankrupt. And right. then the, the Medleys came in and mm -hmm. took over, basically ran it through 92. The Medleys were local people? Yeah, they were local here to Owensboro. Um, they produced like Ezra Brooks, Mellow Corn, Waffins, Medley mm -hmm. Brothers, all that was produced here. And, and right out there, because that's the old bobbling house. Um, but the Green River brand was sold, it was bought uh, in the 30s or 40s. It never really took hold. So one of the collaborations that we've done, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, mm -hmm. with Yellow Banks, but oh, yes. Yellow Banks is really huge. Uh, you know, Jacob is passionate about farmers and about doing good and, and using local farmers and then also about giving back. So Yellow Banks is, uh, came out as a collaboration with the Kentucky Corn Growers. Um, we only source all of our corn from like a 30 mile radius with farmers here in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. The name Yellow Banks is actually the original name of Owensboro dating sure. back to 1797. Mm -hmm. uh, and with, the, with Yellow Banks we actually give a percentage, 5% back to the Kentucky Corn Growers for more research in agriculture and corn. Cool. It's imperative. You know, without them, we wouldn't be making bourbon. And we do have our, this is our standard mm -hmm. mash bill on the 70 21 9. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat because I can't, I don't know of any one person that doesn't come up here and get that sensory on it. So it's kind of neat to, to, uh, to, for people to actually physically see the breakdown of the grains. Got here. Uh, the original grain system was housed in that brick building, that mm -hmm. taller section right there. But the roof had a tear and 20 years of weather on the grain system and the grain bins back then were made out of wood. Huh. So it was all destroyed. So this was obviously the first and biggest expense that we had when we got here. Um, we built it outside mainly for three reasons. Uh, one, it wouldn't fit. Right, right. <laughs> right. Two, we can expand it, which we have. This one uh, hopper right here is strictly for corn and it'll hold 15,000 bushels of corn. So we never run out of our main ingredient. But the third and, and probably most important reason, not probably, but it is, is safety. Because the most dangerous part about making bourbon is grinding grain. Yeah. You know, if the grain dust gets compressed in air, yeah. it can spontaneously combust. So we and put it cool. outside. 
Yeah. So we get all of our grain via truck and trailer right now. They'll pull up underneath the overhang there. The tarp gets pulled back and that's a receiving pit. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes out by conveyor and goes up to one of six storage hoppers. Now those hoppers will each hold a truckload of grain. So that's like a thousand bushels of corn or about 1,500 bushels of rye or barley. Okay. And then it drops down about eye level where the yellow handrails are. There's a platform that houses two hammer mills and that's where we're going to mill our grain. Uh, once it's milled, it goes to the back half where we have an automated weighing system and that weighs out the exact amount of grain that we need for whatever mash bill we're doing. Keep that consistency going. And then it gets moved into the still house where we start the cooking process. So I always point out to people about DSP numbers. You guys are probably very familiar with those. Yep. Uh, you know, they were handed out in order and we have the 10th oldest license in the state of Kentucky. And that's huge because the number stays with the still or the owner. In the, in the spans, in the 22 years that Charles Medley wasn't doing any distilling, he kept renewing that number. That's awesome. And that's huge. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is where we actually do all of our cooking. We have three 12,000-gallon mash cookers. We have one right there. Two is to the right of it. And number three is above us. So we'll add the grain from outside, and then we add water from one of our four limestone wells.
6,000 gallon tankers that we take it to them I have free seen it. of charge. I've, I've seen it on the road before. Yeah, matter of fact, I don't know when you guys pulled in, when I came in this morning, there was a sign out front that said out of slot. Yes. I've never seen that yeah. before anywhere. Yeah, we will go through it. We even have our own cattle that we feed uh, to make sure we can get rid of our own byproduct, have our own tree farm growing. To, to make sure that we can be sustainable in the long run. Rick Hasse, yeah. uh, we have six of these on the property. We have 14 more in another location. So these Rick houses hold 20,000 barrels. Um, all of them are full. Well, with the exception of these, they're at my house, but uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, so, you know, barrel empty weighs a little over 100 pounds. A barrel full weighs well over 500. So in this building alone, we have over 10 million pounds of weight. So it's important that we keep these things level and plumb. You have plumb bobs in here? We do. Okay. We, we use old school technology called the plumb bobs, mm -hmm. and then we have the new school technology called sensors on the building okay. that give us an alert to the phone. So either way, if there's a shift in the building, mm -hmm. the only way to fix it is to come and start moving barrels sure. so it makes it a really slow and labor-intensive process at this point gotta have big old boys uh yeah no they're not that big uh <laughs> not really it's amazing yeah but you know for most people what they don't understand it's just slow and labor intensive at this point all the barrels for the strick house enter and leave through those two doors right there so it doesn't matter if it's going to the fourth floor in the back corner it's just a slow and very labor intensive process so the last time i did this tour i, I learned something i'd never heard of in our tour before and it's the importance of where you start the barrel yeah yeah, the so the, the most likely spot for those barrels to leak is where we fill it, called the bung, which is on the uh, normally on the top of the barrel. So we want that to always stay in that upright position. So our guys know that 23 barrels fit in a row. They know that if this barrel ultimately is going down to spot number 10, then they position that bung, say, at 3 or 4 o'clock. By the time it rolls down to spot number 10, it's at 12 o'clock, and that's called clocking the barrel. And again, slow and labor intensive. A lot of people want to know if we rotate the barrels. We don't. It's too labor intensive. Seems like every tour I go on, someone asks that question. Yeah, sure does. yeah. If a barrel gets rotated, it's for a specific product. It's not all the barrels. It's just right. too labor yeah. intensive. And nowadays, you know, we have these traditional rick houses. We also have what we call rack houses or warehouses. Mm -hmm. You know, but the bungs are on the sides on these, mm -hmm. and our new ones, they're on the top. We use top fill barrels. Uh, these rick houses. Those? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We palletize them. Yeah. These these rick houses, you know, uh, they take like nine months to a year to build one of them. We can build just a general warehouse made out of metal and concrete floor in about three months. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just a quicker, safer, less labor intensive way to do it for us. So right now we're on number 14 and by spring we should have 19. We just started moving into 14 right now. We use a number four char, which I, I believe you guys know, uh, also called, you know, the alligator char. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's a it's a beautiful thing when it comes out. Gets really nice color. So we started working with the great grandson of J.W. McCulloch. His name's Rob McCulloch. Nice. And right there you can see his name. Uh, Rob held the rights, and so we were successful in gaining those rights back. And uh, you know, in the middle of COVID, we brought Green River back home after over a hundred years. So you got Rob McCulloch, you got Jacob Call, and to me, to be honest, the third most important signature on here is me, Karen with a C. Karen with a C. <laughs> 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 I gotta have fun with that. So, and that's our three hundred thousandth barrel that we filled. We just did that last April. So three hundred thousand, then five hundred thousand, then a million. Those are your milestones. Like six people to do to work it. So we'll do a, you know smaller, smaller uh, runs of something. Um, looks like right now they're doing Duke, which is uh, that is uh, ninety five five rye finished in a French oak Cabernet wine barrel. Oh, so you have so. rye going out, but just not under your name. Right. Right. under your label okay okay how much fun was that guys oh it was a fantastic time karen did an amazing job of giving us the tour she answered all of our questions very knowledgeable about the rich history of green river and the revival of green river so what did you think Chuck? oh just so much history the the, the, the history of the, the people the property the buildings the fires the roof collapses the uh, coming back like a you know the phoenix rising from the ashes it's it's a cool place Great people, a lot of hospitality, uh, good juice. Yeah, you say great people. You know what stood out to me was their community servant uh, mentality. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're working with farmers and giving back so we can continue to have the best agricultural business in the world. And they're giving away the slot for free. Other companies sell that stuff. You know, uh, just love what they're doing. And Karen was so much fun. So if you want to go on a tour like we did, all you have to do is reach out to Green River Distillery. We'll put a link to their website in our show notes. 
and uh, give them a call and have a good time. And with that said, please, please drink, drink responsibly. responsibly.